Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Andy, and today we're going to build an AI robot with a Raspberry Pi 5 and a LEGO Mindstorms kit from 1998. Let's get started. So I found this LEGO invention system from the late 90s, and what's interesting about it is it's apparently never been used. It's kind of a shame because somebody probably would have, you know, enjoyed owning this back in the day, and now it's completely obsolete. I mean, the software is designed for Windows 95, um, and it requires a serial port to program it. Now, I have a couple of kids who are getting into STEM-related toys, and I think this would be perfect uh, for them. So we're going to modernize this and basically keep it from being thrown in a landfill. Speaking of landfills, one of the common uses of machine learning in robotics is in recycling. So we're going to build a miniature trash sorting robot. So the first thing we're going to do is connect the IR tower to a Raspberry Pi because it supports USB to serial right out of the box. Then we're gonna replace the old software and I'm gonna show you how to build a web-based graphical programming interface to control the robot in real time. We will connect a camera to the Raspberry Pi so that we can connect to GPT-4 or Claude or some other vision API. And then we'll build a robot out of these actual Lego parts. Uh, but first let's take a closer look at the condition of the parts in this box because I can see already there's gonna be at least one major problem. So as you can see, everything is still in its original packaging. There are some empty spaces where I've taken things out, including what they call the microcomputer, as well as the IR tower and some cables. But uh, most importantly, I took out the wires for the motors and sensors, and I put them in separate containers because the insulation on these wires is disintegrating and it's making a big mess. So we're gonna to wanna to replace the cables right away and clean up the residue that's already starting to get on things. Okay, we'll start with this one. Oh man, look at that. It just like flakes right off when I touch it. So we'll have to figure out how to get into this brick without damaging it. I prefer to use these soft plastic tools because they don't scratch harder plastics. And after plenty of prying, I managed to get it open. Okay, so this is interesting. There's no solder in here. Uh, it's more of like a vampire tap sort of connector like the old computer networks where it uh, pierces through the insulation. Okay, well, we can work with that. All right, I'm gonna cut this cable down and toss it because this stuff is getting everywhere. We just wanna push the new wires into there without damaging them. And then we'll press the top part of the brick on with some pressure to pierce the insulation. All right, that looks pretty solid. Let's just give it a test with the multimeter. Perfect. Now, the light sensor, it looks a little trickier. I don't think I can remove these tabs without damaging something. Well, I gotta get in here somehow, so I'm gonna try and cut these tabs off cleanly uh, with a blade and see how that goes. Well, I, <laughs> I didn't show it on camera, but opening the sensor brick took a lot of time and effort. Uh, I did break one of the plastic tabs inside. That was unavoidable. But if you look here at the PCB, it's obvious where the new cable needs to be soldered in. So let's do that. So as always, we start with flux and then we're gonna grab with tweezers and gently pull the old wires out while we heat up the solder with the iron. And then we strip the new wires and strip the new wires. No, give me just a second. Yeah, it's always challenging to solder for the camera. I have to do it at a weird angle. <laughs> okay, well that's not proper soldering technique, but it got the job done. It looks good, and I've cleaned the junk out of the blue brick. You can see how the board fits back in there. And here it is with the wire situated. I'll probably just glue that back together. And the other end has another one of these black bricks. We just Press the pieces together until they snap. And that looks really quite good. We managed to do it without ruining the brick and it still looks nice, so that's awesome. Now that we've restored the wires on our bricks, we need to test them. So I figure now's a good time to power up the yellow programmable brick. I'm just gonna call it the computer for simplicity's sake. I've been going through the various documentation that came with this and it really seems like they wanted you to learn how to use it from the official Windows 95 software. The information in the user guide is pretty limited, but I did find something about the built-in programs that we can use. So if we put the light sensor on port two and the motor on port A and then run program three, we should be able to control the motor with a light sensor. So we'll load this up with batteries and plug in the motor with one of our repaired wires. And then the sensor goes up here and let's see if this still works after all these years. Nice. Now we'll select the program and 
we'll press run. Now the motor's spinning, that's a good sign. And if we block the sensor, it works. Well, that's, uh, I mean, that's pretty definitive. Yeah, that totally works. So this proves that the computer, the wire, the light sensor, and the motor all work. So as I mentioned in the beginning, we're not gonna be using the original software that came with this. I've done a little research and found that the Raspberry Pi supports USB to serial adapters like this one out of the box. I did try connecting this to a Windows 11 machine and the device manager basically said, don't even bother trying. So uh, I'm not going to. The Raspberry Pi website has great instructions on how to install the OS for your Pi. So I'm not gonna cover that here, but I will, however, put a link in the description to the Element 14 community website where I'll include all the resources uh, for this project, like the code, blog posts, and everything else I used. We're going to install something called NQC, or Not Quite C, which is a C-like language that can be used to program the Mindstorms computer. Now, there is a bit of setup involved here, but somebody was kind enough to document the process. NQC can also be used to send single commands directly to the computer, and one of those commands is to upload new firmware. There are various ways to get the firmware file. I actually have an optical drive and was able to extract the firmware from the CD. To prepare for the upload, we plug the USB to serial adapter into the Pi and the serial cable into the adapter. The serial cable then plugs into the IR tower, which requires a 9-volt battery. All right, then once we have NQC installed and the firmware file in the right place, we can execute the command to upload the firmware. Look at that, it's counting. I don't know what we're looking at there. <laughs> Are those bytes? All right, it's done. Let's go look at some code. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? So I said before that NQC is a programming language, and typically the next thing we would do is write a program with a text editor, compile it, and upload it to the programmable brick. Uh, but that's a little advanced for kids who have never written code, and it's why LEGO originally included a graphical programming environment with the robotics invention system. But rather than dig up a Windows 95 computer just so we can run a very outdated program, uh, we're going to make our own modern UI with a Google web library called Blockly. Uh, this is the same library used by Scratch, which is a graphical programming environment uh, aimed at kids. So if you've ever seen that, this is going to look familiar. Now the simplest Blockly application I know how to create is just a web page with some JavaScript. And as you can see, I've created exactly that. You don't have to install Blockly locally. Uh, here I'm adding the, uh, the scripts from the unpackaged CDN just by pointing to the URLs. And after that, there's a number of JavaScript files that I've created to define custom blocks and code generation. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the application, which I'm calling BlockStorms, to demonstrate how it works. And on the left are all these groups of blocks. Everything from logic to functions are built in. And if I go into text, I can uh, drag a, pl a print block. And then I'll grab this literal text block and we can type hello world. And when I click the generate Python code button, I get a Python program, which represents what we've added to the workspace. So this is really cool. And it works because I included Blockly's Python code generator and I have this function that executes when you click the button that puts the Python code in a div tag under the button. But what if we want a block that can turn on one of our Lego motors? Well, we can go into the motor group and drag the set motor block onto the workspace. And if you click on the drop down, you can see that we can select which motor we want. And we can also turn the motor on and off or have a coast. Now, when we generate the Python code, we get a call to NQC, which executes a raw command. And this command happens to be the one that turns motor A on. Uh, there's a whole documented list of numeric opcodes and parameters that I use for reference to figure out what commands to send to the programmable brick and control it in real time. And you can control the motors, read values from the sensors, and uh, even do things like play sounds. So these blocks are all defined by custom JavaScript code, so let's take a look. So this is the code that defines the set motor block, and you can see how the dropdown values are defined. Uh, as well as things like the block color and the tooltip. And below that is the, uh, the Python code generator for the block. Uh, it takes the parameters that you selected and turns them into a call to NQC. 
and subprocess is Python's way of calling a child process. Ideally, we'd want to replace this generate Python code button with a button that says something like run on RCX. That would probably involve adding in uh, like the Flask framework and it's a bit more complicated. So for now, we'll just copy the Python code into a file and run it from the command line. Now I should point out that there's a drawback to this approach of sending one command at a time to the RCX rather than uploading a full program, and that's lag. There is a noticeable delay when executing commands that makes this unsuitable for certain types of projects. Theoretically, we could make a Blockly code generator that generates NQC code, but that's a whole other level, and I'm not ready for that yet. So let me show you a quick example that plays a few notes to show you how much of a delay there actually is. So there you have it. Uh, fortunately, I've come up with a project idea where the delay shouldn't be a big deal. I've got an old Pi camera module in my parts bin, and we can use Python subprocess again to call libcamera still to capture an image. And I've added a parameter so we can specify the file name. The last block I'm going to show you is the most interesting one. It uses the new GPT-40 model, and it lets you upload an image and ask questions about it with a customizable prompt. So you'll have to provide your own API key and the way I'm doing it here isn't the most secure, but it is simple and it works. Those are all the elements we need to program our robot. Let's go back to the Lego and I'll put my extremely amateur design skills to the test. Well, it's been decades since I've built anything original with toy blocks, so not sure how this is gonna go, but uh, it should be fun regardless. So let's open these all up and see what we have to work with. I'm not going to actually count the pieces in this set, but from what I could tell, they're all here. Sadly, a few of the rubber tires have started to deteriorate, but everything else looks brand new. Now, since I have no idea how long this is going to take, I'm going to go spend some time building, and I'll come back when I have something that works. It'll seem instant to you, but for me, it's probably going to take a few hours of real time. And here is the trash sorting robot. I found some small carts, which are fun, and the camera is mounted on a stand, which is part 3D printed and part Lego. So originally I was gonna put actual trash on the conveyor belt, which is really, uh, it's just a couple of tank treads. Uh, but the size here is really limiting. So what I've done is I've printed some images on uh, some pieces of cardstock, and that should work just as well. So the way this works is we put our image up there, and then I've got a touch sensor set up as a button to activate it. So the camera takes a picture, sends the picture to GPT-40, which classifies this image as trash or recycling, and then it activates the motor in the right direction to put the item in the correct bin. I've also made a block storms program to control everything. There's an infinite loop that continually watches for button input, and when the button's pressed, it queries the AI model with a custom prompt. The prompt is designed to always produce a single word response that can easily be parsed by our program logic. And here's an example of what the camera actually sees. I guess there's nothing left to do but try it out. We start by running the Python program generated by the Blockstorms workspace. Then I give the touch sensor a firm press. The image is captured and classified by GPT-40. And it got it right. Let's try styrofoam this time, which is generally considered not recyclable. We'll push the button again. Yep, it's seen it as trash. This thing's working great. I should build a full-size version. That's all we have for today. Have you ever revived an old toy or device with modern electronics? Let us know at the Element 14 community at the link in the description. And we'll see you next time.